YouTuber movies, much like video game movies, are impeccable masterpieces that no one can judge. Why watch The Godfather or Citizen Kane when you can watch Fred the movie? <laughs> or Fred 2, Night of the Living Fred. Grab his head like this, turn his neck sideways like this! <laughs> Actually, never mind. That was a good film. Now, jokes aside, YouTuber movies are usually terrible. They're usually made with one goal in mind. Money. But the problem is, YouTubers usually work solo, maybe like with or without an editor. And translating the comfy feel of a YouTuber to the big screen, it's pretty difficult. So companies have tried to add dangerous new chemicals to the YouTuber movie equation. Relatability and funny. Firstly, they tried it with Shane Dawson. Yeah, I do have some pretty sick moves. You know, in high school, they used to call me a depressed dog. Oh no, why? Well, because I ain't got no balls! <laughs> <laughs> then they tried it with Smosh. Online. What? I hate you! And now finally, we have Logan Paul, who released Airplane Mode. You can't like me! You can't make me! Wait guys, wait for me! Uh, the film's premise is Logan Paul and other funny man YouTubers traveling to Australia for a convention. Now, if you're wondering why Logan looks different here, this was actually filmed way back in 2016. A whole year before, uh, <clears throat> certain events. I've made a severe... Hence why he looks so adorable and pure here. Like, just, just want to bite his little millionaire cheeks. But also, because this was filmed in 2016, the film is just full of stale memes. Hides your knives, hides your drugs, and hides your liquors, because we searching everybody around here. I'm going to break you like a new pair of sneakers. They have. Damn Daniel. An incredible chain of events has led to the rescue... I love my wife dearly. Uh, the official Twitter account of the movie hasn't been active since 2017. It's just a prank! <laughs> Thankfully, Facebook <laughs> came in clutch. Shout out to the skeleton still running that account. For more proof, there's a behind the scenes video on Logan's second channel in full 360 degrees. Oh my god, wow, it actually feels like I'm here with Logan Paul. Looks good. No. <laughs> Now, Logan has starred in various films beforehand, like uh, The Thinning, which was this T-rated purge film where if you failed an exam, you got game-ended. Uh, that somehow got a sequel. I'm sure they had a lot of outside funding. He also cameoed in mainstream films like Baywatch. Uh, he was removed from the film entirely, and his scene can only be found in the extended cut DVD. No idea why, like, his acting was impeccable. What's your name, funny guy? I'm Zane. You're Zane. Come on, I'm... I'm saying, get the Bruh. f off my beach. Okay. Okay. Now, there are rips on the film online already. Thank you, soldiers. You're doing God's work. But they're all horrendous quality. And plus, I don't want to go to jail. My VPN just expired. So I actually did the worst thing imaginable. I gave Logan Paul my money and bought the movie. Well, I. I rented it, you know, it, it, it sounds a bit more impactful when you say buying. Also, it's only available from iTunes. We appreciate it very much, Tim Apple. So I had to download the launcher, read the license agreement. Gives me connections. Take a quick look at the credits and oh my god, Logan and Jake are screenwriters. Now, the film actually opens up with a parody of airline safety PSAs, which, to be fair, is pretty clever. Then they ruin it with a puke joke. Complimentary drink. But for one, just put that to the Oh my god, they got David Dobrik in this, didn't they? After a stroke-inducing intro with <laughs> emojis, we're introduced to our protagonist, Logan Paul. I cannot believe I just said those words out loud. Yeah, don't worry, babe. It's just me. Now, one thing you'll notice throughout, the entire film is shot like a lot of the Fred films. You've got these awkward angles that linger for too long, and jokes that don't even hit the mark. So, they'll keep going with the joke, hoping you'll laugh, but you don't. One thing I'll give Logan, he's a brainlet, but he's, he's a pretty confident brainlet. Scenes with him don't feel too awkward, just incredibly forced. Of course, I can't say the same for, uh, the rest of the cast. I had 911 reasons not to trust this guy. What about your real brother, Jake? Oh, <laughs> Disney got him. Okay. <laughs> God damn it, why did I laugh? All right, Logan, you get this one, but I'm only laughing once. I'm not laughing again. But then, 
something terrible happens. Lele Pons appears in the film, and her humor is just as subtle as it was on Vine. Ready for the test? Obviously! Check in with how you're performing and uh, yeah, just put your fingers in your ears. <laughs> also, nice tweet about showing Logan's face, even though you clearly didn't get that angle with your phone. They literally just nabbed the actual footage from the film and put it into a tweet. <laughs> nice work, guys. They also have this shot of Logan's crotch getting closer to the camera that adds nothing, apart from making Paul stands cream their pants, I guess. I wanted to interrupt the video really quick. I'll be at the Insomnia Gaming event in Birmingham, UK from the 23rd to the 26th of August. We're going to be bringing exclusive merch that you can't buy online, so please come down. Please, God, do it, or I'll... I'll tell the police you touch me. Also, I'm bringing out my own little figure you can buy. It's called U2s. They're not available for pre-order yet, but they will be sold on the 23rd of August. So mark that in your calendar, scribble it onto your wall, or tell your local Aldrich guard so he can give you nightmares to remind you. Once they're gone, they'll never be restocked again. So remember, August 23rd. Check the link in the description below to check them out. If you don't buy one, I'll make a Reddit text-to-speech video. Don't you dare tempt me. You didn't hear about hashtag a car? Bro, it's the biggest social media convention ever. Yeah, man, hashtag a car. Everyone's gonna be there. Paris, people get laid at conventions. <laughs> yeah, they do. Okay. Really? <laughs> so is that like a thing? Apparently, it's comedy when loads of people walk into the same room. They talk about flying to the convention, and we cut to a flashback of why Logan doesn't like flying. It's Now, we know that Logan wasn't doing that 10 years ago. He was doing this. Two, what's the three? Butthead street. Wow, you're a jerk. Don't call back again. Also, man does funny jump and floor fall in. Funny because injury happen and injury bad. Lol. <laughs> this opening scene alone just shows that the film has no direction. It's almost like they thought of a bunch of jokes before the concept of the movie, and the movie only exists to justify having all these jokes in it. Uh, using jokes with rather large quotation marks, by the way, I really don't see how a CGI termite laying mad pipe is classified as comedy. Oh yeah, uh, one joke I forgot to mention, if you can even call it that. Logan gives up his lube because he's gonna go meet his girlfriend in person, and then he has a, a conversation with the lube. Time to say goodbye, old friend. One more time for old time's sake. No! You're making this harder than it has to be. That's what I was hoping for. This is the only scene in the entire film where an inanimate object talks. So I thought I'd do the scene justice and replace the dialogue with Conker's Bad Fur Day. Time to say goodbye, old friend. No! I'm making this harder than it has to be. Ah, uh, then bring me back, me missing cocks! Oh, f what? I'm deaf! Speak up! Oh, f up! Okay, one thing I will give them is that they introduce Vitaly, the Russian prank YouTuber, and they do it as this weird Bane Hannibal Lecter hybrid, and I, I really don't think they understood how funny that was. It's only really because of how explosive Vitaly is in person. I have big balls. And I'm not a bruh. Out of 165 videos, I maybe faked five videos. Joey Salas, you bruh. disrespected my mother. You wanted to bruh. Her. You want to bruh. Her. Come on, bruh. I will cut off your bruh. Shove it in your mouth. Make you bruh. Chew on it. And I will bruh. You too, you love me. You bruh. 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 And then they totally ruin that scene by showing a girl making out with her parents that goes on for just way too long. Also, remember when I said Casey Neistat was in the film? He's got one scene. And he has the most wooden acting I've ever seen. Why, sir? I just have a laptop. You've been randomly selected by our advanced safety algorithm for an extensive anal cavity search. To be fair, though, it, it's not like I'd fare much better if I tried acting. Well, maybe you should open your mouth and start talking. The aliens are coming. We've been compromised. Spit it out, Corporal. Oh, Colonel. We are so bruh. Also, like I said earlier, David Dobrik is in this film. Uh, he, ha he has a scene where he walks onto the plane and grabs his ass. <laughs> That's it, literally. I think another problem with this film is all the pointless YouTuber cameos, and it's really apparent that most of the YouTubers have had no acting experience. And most of their humor is pretty much loud equal 
funny. Okay, so look at this clip of actual actors, and then when a YouTuber is introduced. <sighs> As passengers in the emergency row, are you willing and capable to assist in the event of an emergency? All right, good enough. No! Not! Bruh. Not! Most people in this film who aren't YouTubers are actually pretty capable with the script. Keep in mind, it's a terrible script, but they've done pretty good with what they've been given. Also, uh, just to prove how flaccid Logan's acting can be, look at the shock on his face when he realizes someone has game-ended on the plane. And then three seconds later, when his friend shows up. Here you are, sir. Uh -huh. Hey! Wapa, you made it! Like, where is the funny in that scene? Is it how he went from distressed to happy in seconds? Uh, I, mean, I mean, the guy's got holes in his brains, we already know that. On the inside, what parts are active, what parts aren't, which one should be, which one shouldn't be. Broke his skull oh when he God. was in seventh grade. And he goes, but it didn't hurt my brain. And you see these holes and you hurt it, which means you're gonna have trouble with focus and forethought and follow through and organization planning empathy so for oh relationships my God. and learning <laughs> they also have a texting scene that looks like every texting scene from every film ever you know the one where the, the text message pops up on the side of the screen i mean bruh even spider-man on the ps4 did it but at least that had actual acting compared to just someone staring blankly at a screen for 40 seconds. Also, a uh, slight nitpick, but these texts are appearing way too quickly for an actual person to be typing. Oh. You've taken the film from a 9 to an 8.5. One thing I've noticed about this film as well is that there's so much swearing. Most of it is pretty unneeded, and the way most jokes go, if the swearing was removed, this could have actually just been a really bad family-friendly film. Hey, what the actual f Bruh. Bruh. I know my rights, mother. Bruh. Bruh. Run me on your Bruh. Bruh. So I really don't understand the age demographic they were going for here, because the film is basically just Fred, but with swearing. No, no, fuck! Don't be so Bruh. naive, please. My name is Penis. Butthead Street. Also, back on David Dobrik for a second. <laughs> Did anyone tell him he's actually in a movie? Holy oh, sh! Bruh. You're in the wrong business here. The way he acts is exactly like how he acts in his vlogs, especially when girls try to hit on him, and he clearly doesn't want them to. What's your least favorite part about hanging out with me? Um, the sexual tension, for sure. Dude, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so uncomfortable. You're in it. This film's got a, a montage sequence as well. Montages are usually used in films to cover a large passage of time or a series of events quickly. They can actually usually be the highlights of a film, you know, condensing several microcosms into a short but thrilling sequence. Here, they just use it to show them all taking selfies. <laughs> yeah, I, I got nothing. Please turn your cellular and electronic devices to airplane setting. Hey, bro. I rather die than turn Bruh. my off. I rather die so you kill me, mother. Bruh. Oh yeah, remember the plot? Uh, neither do I. The, the pilots die because no one turned their phones onto airplane mode. Do you think that they? It's the cell phone. I mean, to be honest, I, I totally forgot they were there after Lele Pons screamed for the fortieth time. Wait for the service. Little side note here: Lele Pons had an entire video dedicated to skits on an airplane, and it is it is just as bad as you think. Mm -hmm. Oh, we all fart? Also, this film has a lot of joke stealing, which I'm gonna sprinkle examples throughout the video. And also, the movie actually nabs a lot of tropes that Lele Pun's video had. What have we got here? The worried passenger. The most dangerous time on a plane is three minutes after takeoff. Uh, the people having sex on the plane. Yeah, I just, you know, came out here because my co-pilot, you know, he went to the bathroom. He got lonely. <laughs> you know how that goes. <laughs> Look, if you need to nab from Lele Pun's for ideas, you, you've hit a new low, right? Hey, that's a that's a series I used to do. Also, another joke steal here, uh, this gag with the kid. This was totally stolen from the film Airplane, an actually funny movie. Coffee, sir? They just swapped the kids' genders around, thinking that that's enough to change the scene. Cream? No, thank you. I take it black. Like my man. How would you like it? Like I like my women. Black and full of cream. Now, there's another montage of people partying on the plane. Literally... Two minutes after the first montage of them taking selfies, 
hopefully the rest of the film is a giant montage, so it'll be over quicker. Also, I didn't want to mention this until later in the video, so the Susan bot doesn't demonetize the video. But th th there are a lot of sexual innuendos in this film. You've got people grinding on each other, uh, termites laying mad pipe, people passed out on each other looking like they're giving heads. This stuff is the equivalent of rude thing funny. You're beautiful from head to toe to camel toe. I would say one of the best things about this film though is the flight attendant. He's not great, but he's leagues above everyone else in this movie. He actually feels like he's a character compared to just YouTubers thrown on here with a script. I need you to figure this out, okay? I need to put my seed into a woman's vagina before I die. I think I like him because you can tell that he's just having so much fun with what he was given. Mm, look at you, my little fluffy haired cunt I can hear you. There's this one scene where he actually breaks character and <laughs> just starts to laugh. It's your skinny, weird Selena Gomez lookalike bullshit. Go get on your phone and go find a girl to suck. I think it's because he realized in that moment that Logan Paul thinks he's an actor. <laughs> one thing I've noticed as well is that there are just so many plot threads in this film that go absolutely nowhere. All friendlies have been eliminated. One scene, you got the boss baby, and he walks around the plane. I thought he'd go and lean on some control panel or something, but no. Nope. Mom picks him up, and yeah, th that's it. Literally nothing of note. You called me last night at 3 a.m. You call yourself a salesman, you son of a bitch? Bruh. I think it's because I called the boss baby without your permission. And then the baby goes missing again, and a guy picks him up and tries to breastfeed him. A and then they do some weird Lion King parody, because Lion King relevant film, now in cinema, lol. Bird up. There's just so many gags that make no sense, and they, they add nothing to the overall plot. Look at these people making out. It's funny because they're small. Look at this woman doing yoga when the plane is about to crash. It's funny because it's not something you do in that situation. Look at this flashback where Doctor pukes on Logan Paul as kids. Funny because wouldn't happen in hospital. Look, there's key factors with jokes, alright? You need to have rhythm or timing, you need to be confident with your delivery, and you need to know your target audience. Let's uh, just pretend you didn't say that. Most of the jokes in this film do not abide by any of these rules. There's no timing, jokes just happen, and by the time you've processed the joke, you've already been hit with five more. Yeah, I bite him. The jokes usually have terrible, awkward delivery that drowns out any possible humor. And the film, like I said earlier, clearly does not know its target audience. It feels like a Nickelodeon film, but it can't be because it has constant sexual innuendos and swearing. Timmy Turner, this is the last birthday party you and your fairies will ever have together. By the way, happy birthday. Shut up. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, the plot. Uh, later in the film, Logan Paul and woman have to try and land the plane and this is where the airplane joke stealing becomes really apparent they're both possible lovers inexperienced with flying they have a contact on the ground who's mentally insane <laughs> meanwhile the passengers in the back become really unruly also i really don't like how this australian guy is portrayed it's incredibly offensive like do, do you really think an australian would sound like this big orange lever set a console are you bloody colorblind <laughs> When in real life, they sound like this. A BB long neck at 20 to 8 in the Bruh. morning. Disgusting. You'll be speaking to my lawyer. Midnight oil! Oh yeah, remember Vitaly? One of the, the funny things about this film? Yeah, he is not even mentioned until the last third of the film, where he escapes the restraints, and much like the cabin staff, he's clearly just not taking his role seriously, which makes it so much better. I like to think of him as Russia's Nicolas Cage. Any scene he's in after breaking out is just pure insanity. <laughs> he's just amazing and honestly really helped me get through the film. Bless you, Vitaly. Please seek help. Then Logan Paul comes in and ruins the scene by giving the stands another excuse to jerk off by ripping off his pants. And he also does the most inhumane thing possible. Absolutely correct. He removed Vitaly from the movie. I'm a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment. I hope you are cast into the 10th circle of hell. I know you! Oh, fuck. Get the fuck out of here. Wait, why? What? Why? Why? I know you. Uh, I, oh wait, how much is left of the film? 10 minutes? We can do that. So, Logan tries to land the plane by watching a YouTube tutorial. Honor, your sister said you're looking at anime porn again. She's lying! Well, I was one yes! There's a monkey there for some reason. Now it's gone. They land the low-budget CG plane. 
and the rest of the film takes place on a green screen. Logan's friend sleeps with the girl, Logan sleeps with the girl, the guy who obviously isn't in the film awkwardly tries to get out the frame, <laughs> and that's it. Overall, I just don't understand why this film was made. Apart from money. I mean, it's basically a cameo of the most ad-friendly YouTubers on the site. I mean, there's no PewDiePie, there's no me. I'm actually quite offended I wasn't asked to be on this film. All I would have done is change the ending where Vitaly is the protagonist and Logan Paul is the bad guy. Your boy's going to jail. That's right. Like, that would have actually been a half-decent film. Thank you all for watching. I'd like to give a shout-out to my newest Patreon, Chairman Mao. Now go away. Video's over. Start the rotors, we can bring the anti-